Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing alright, I have to say I almost fell asleep, I almost fell asleep, I feel like I'm just going to wake up from, from a dream or a nightmare, should I say, because ah, uh, it's insane, you, <laughs> you spend that much money and then you get that. If I was Todd Bowley or Egbali right now, like we saw them in the stands, I'd be fuming right now. I would be, I'd be like, hang on, hang on one sec. I spent this much and this is the output. Even at the beginning, I understand chemistry is not going to be a thing, right? Straight away. I understand that you're not going to get the finished article now. Of course not. It's unrealistic. But just like I said in the preview yesterday, there has to be... A level of improvement. There has to be. In terms of you get these lads in, right? And the only man missing tonight was basically Jao Felix, right? Everyone else was available and, and, and there. You look at the team and you think there has to be a level of improvement. Even if it's by this much, there has to be a level of improvement. We didn't have a shot. Hang on. Did we even have a shot on target um, th this whole game? I need to go back and check. Oh, we had two in the end. I think it was like the minutes, minutes, 75th minute or something. We were still trolling about with zero shots on target. Fulham had four, by the way, just to let you know. It's the same issues. It's the same problems. And oh my God, you know what's, you know what's mad? All the new lads that play today, Bar Mudrick, Bar Mudrick, right? And I'm going to come to him in a sec because I don't even blame him. They all played decent. Fair play. There wasn't any big standout performances. Bad Yashile in defence, you could look at and go, yeah, you know what? He looked, he looked slick. He looked slick. But it wasn't mind-blowing. Although there were good performances from the new lads. As I've said, except Mudrick, I'll come to him in a sec. The old lads, the normal lads, my goodness. I told you in the preview that I was... I, I picked Mount and I picked Havertz in the team, for example. I didn't pick Gallagher, although I'm going to mention him in a sec. Because we need to see if they're going to step up or they're going to stand out and get exposed. And today, they stood out and they exposed themselves. Simple. The levels are starting to increase around them and they can't keep up. Simple as that. They cannot keep up. It's baffling in terms of some of the players that were on the pitch today and the way that we were set up, which I'll come to in the end. I'm going to leave a whole segment for that towards the end because it has to be mentioned, right? I'm not going to just, you know, think, oh, you know, nothing's going to happen, so we're just not going to say anything. No, I'm going to say, I'm going to say what I think. My, my opinions are on this channel. I'm going to say what I think. But if we go through this team, right? Kepa with a great first half save, by the way. Absolutely uh, class, although um, there's nothing bad to say about Kepa. He kept the clean sheet and he saved us on a couple of occasions. So fantastic. Reese James starting. Um, not massive impact, but I, I was scared. When I saw the lineup, I'm like, oh no, not again, not again. Please don't get injured. Please don't get injured. Thankfully, he didn't get injured. He came off the pitch in one piece. That's all I'm looking for from Reese James at the moment. I thought it was quite bizarre how he started, but... He looked fit enough and hopefully from the next game onwards, he'll be able to play 90 minutes without any interruption. Um, Thiago Silva, bad Yashile. This is where Thiago Silva, I mean, it's Thiago Silva. What, what can I say? You know, the, the, man of the match for me alongside bad Yashile. It's just it's, it's the fact that those two central defenders are the only shining lights in this entire Chelsea team in terms of what they are meant to do within their positions on a week to week basis, right? The new lads have just come in, so we'll give them a chance to show themselves on a consistent basis, you know, to keep that consistency o over a period of time. Thiago Silva, bad Yashile, they cannot, they just don't set a foot wrong. So, absolutely amazing. Although they get put under pressure. They get put under pressure and they deal with it. They get put under unnecessary pressure and they deal with it. And if they do leak one or two here and there, I can't even blame them because the amount of pressure they're being put under is actually quite stupid. And I'll come to that very shortly. Kukurea. Couple of good and bright moments and the rest were absolutely horrific. That's basically it. You look at Kukurea and you see him on a run and you think, all right, he's got the ball. He's made a great run. He's, he's, he's getting to the box. He's about to make a cross. Great. Good run. Good move. Nice. Does that a couple of times, but everything else he's done is a shambolic. Lost the ball. <laughs> um, doesn't get stuck in quick enough. Times his tackle wrong. Constantly. I, I don't, I don't know. I was glad to see Chilwell come on, although he came on with eight minutes remaining. Chilwell's just come back, so we're going to give him time. This is where we get interesting. Enzo. Enzo, I thought, played well. 
for 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 what he had to deal with today, which I, I felt sorry for him. He had to deal with everything that he had around him. Fair play to Enzo. Because the man looked like you he looked like Andrew Tate right now. Yeah. Locked in a Romanian cell without any chance of showing any evidence to get himself out. Uh getting refused all of his appeals. Right. Enzo looked like that today. Stuck in the six role and he can't move. He's there basically looking like Jorginho never left. But the thing with Enzo is you could see, doesn't lose the ball. When he gets the ball, he knows where to send the ball. He knows how to pick out a pass. He knows how to get the ball to his destination. Enzo done everything he possibly could in that role. But he was in jail. In jail. Now, I have to look at two reasons why he was in jail today. The two midfielders in front of him, who I'm coming to next, and the manager. Was that a tactical instruction for him to play the way that he did? So deep, without any license to go forward whatsoever because there isn't anyone to play alongside him in that double pivot. It was almost a 4-3-3 with two eights. That looked absolutely blind. Enzo just, for, 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 for the space that he was allowed to be in, done well. I, I, can, I can say that. He won the ball when he could. And as I said, he distributed very, very well. That's it. For a debut, Enzo, I've got nothing bad to say. But the two geezers in front of him. Mason Mount, Conor Gallagher. Oh my god. I'm, I'm actually shocked. Everton came in with a £45 million bid for this for, for Conor Gallagher. They came in with 45 M's. 45 million for this guy. And then we didn't entertain it because Conor didn't want to go. Mate, I would have lied and said Real Madrid have come for you and drop him in Liverpool and leave. Like, that's, that's what I would have done. This is how bad it's getting with these two lads. Conor Gallagher, for different reasons, by the way, for different reasons. Mason Mount is... Mason Mount's bold, right? He doesn't shy away. But when he gets the ball and he tries to do something, it almost every time goes wrong. Conor Gallagher looks petrified. Look so uncertain. Both of them just look like they don't have the mental capacity to play in that role efficiently. You know, as proper, proper eights or central midfielders. Hang on, talking about eights. Mason Mount played in an eight today, right? What's he doing on the left-hand side? Literally invading Mudrick's entire position to the point where Mudrick just didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. Every time Mace has gone left, he's gone left. Mate, give him some room to breathe at least a little bit. It's just, I find it baffling. And on top of that, every time, every time except I remember one pass that Mount made, which was actually quite decent, where I think it was the ball from Enzo in the first half and he drifted it across the box to Kai Havertz. Fair enough. Good pass. That's it. That's it. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. Everything Mount touches goes wrong. And everything Gallagher touches, he chooses to go wrong. Because Gallagher looks like he's he, he's not quite here more than Mace. Gallagher looks like he gets the ball. The only thing is, okay, I've got to get rid of this ASAP. I've got to get rid. I've got to get rid. Go backwards. I'm sorry. If that's how you think as a midfielder in, this, in, a, in a Chelsea team, you don't belong at Chelsea. Simple as that. To be honest... That should that should be the bare minimum for any Premier League team. We're talking about the Premier League here, man. This is this is a this is a mistake, right? That is applied at, at Sunday League. You know, players players at Sunday League get dropped because they don't have the mental capacity to play in that position. Do you know how difficult it is to play in that position? What you actually need to master mentally to play in that position, your awareness your sharpness, your intelligence. You don't play with your feet if you're playing as a six or as an eight. You don't play with your feet. You play with your head. You play with your brain. That's the key. You don't need to be the quickest player. You don't, you don't need to be the most technical player. You need to have a brain. You need to know your your surroundings and you know to, you need to know exactly what you're going to do with the ball before it even arrives. If you don't have that ability at the highest level, you cannot play in that role for a top team like Chelsea or like City or like United or like Arsenal, Liverpool, even Spurs. You can't. And I, I personally, my opinion, I account that to Premier League sides. You're talking about the best league in the world here. And this is what 
this is your mental capacity when you're playing as a, a as a central midfielder for for Chelsea. It's 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 poor. It's very 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 poor. Gets the ball, panics, just thinks I I, I need to. Uh, where, where's my option? I just need to forget about art. Uh, I need to try and make sure that I adhere to an instruction, or with, we're playing a certain way. I need to make sure that I know how to fit myself into this way of playing. I need to know what pass to pinpoint. I need to know which runner I need to look out for. I need to know which player is running into what space, and I can get it to him because it's my responsibility to get at least that part of the attack right no it's just i've got the ball okay who's near me who's near me here you go you don't do that you don't if if you're gonna do that don't play simple don't play that accounts to gallagher and that accounts to mount mount more times than not as i've said is more bolder i feel like he's more confident on the ball mount's problem is every time he tries to execute something it goes wrong mount for example he picks out a pass this is his problem picks out kai Havertz. oh you're there kai all right he actually thinks yeah i'm gonna get the ball forward he sees a fulham defender right next to him forgets oh no he's a danger if i get the if i try and pass the ball to him Chances are it's going to get intercepted. Mason will go, ah, screw it. Here you go. Boom. What happens? Intercepted. You know? Tries to pick out a pass all the way to the right-hand side. I think it was to Ziyech earlier on in the first half. Goes, okay, I'm going to try and ping this. Instead to actually hit it up over in order for it to read Ziyech, he hits it low. Knowing that there's a Fulham defender that can literally run one and a half metres in front of him in order to intercept the pass. It's not the hardest thing to do to intercept it. Mount thinks, now nah, don't worry, I'll hit it anyway. It's going to make it. He tries. What happens? Interception. The hot, it happens every single time. These players stood out like bad mushrooms today. Bad mushrooms. You know when mushrooms are popping up and you go, oh, that looks healthy. That looks up. That's poisonous. That's poisonous. That's what happened. Not good enough. And as a result, I honestly think Mount held Mudrick back. And Kukurea also held Mudrik back. But the fact that Mudrik couldn't have one take on, had the least amount of touches, had no dribbles, no no shots, no shots, nothing. The guy was absent. We weren't using him. It was going Kukurea, Mason Mount, Mason Mount bombarding the left-hand side all by himself and then trying to shift it into the middle. Forget Mudrik. We, we played with 10 men. It's not good enough. That's absolutely not good enough. And for the fact that we ha always use the excuse, well, Mount's got to play in his position. He's an eight. And then we, we, we shine out an 88 million pound signing like he's not on the pitch, whilst Mount's meant to be playing in an eight. I, I, it's baffling. Absolutely baffling. But I have to make this clear. Does this go to the players? The players on the ball and the decision they make on the ball is down to the players. But in terms of the positioning and in terms of the tactical setup, if Mount is drifting over into that space and he's not being told anything about that, that's on Graham Potter. I don't even blame Mason for that. That's on Graham Potter. How come there was nothing on his end? Mount got shoved up. What, what Potter had done to correct the situation was take Mudrik off at half time. Now, I have to say, if Mudrik wasn't injured, that sub was criminal. We'll wait and see because I'm expecting news to come out that Mudrik had a knock or he's not fit enough or something. In that case, cool. Even though, to be honest, when it comes down to fitness, I see, we all see the clips. The man's running like a machine in the gym. The man's in the gym doing after hours. He's doing overtime literally in the gym on the pitch. He's taking shots. He's running like a horse. He's doing everything in training. And you can see that apparently he's not fit enough though to be able to play 90 or to keep going beyond the, the beyond half time. It doesn't make any sense. If he's not picked up a knock or some sort of injury, it's criminal to take him off at 45, thinking that's going to be the solution, when the solution was probably to either tell Mount to stay in his role or to take him off and allow your winger to be free in order to run and use those spaces and to take on players and do what we know we signed him for. I, I, absolutely baffling. Absolutely baffling. Ziyech on the right-hand side, not good enough, although I don't really blame him. I mean, he shouldn't be here right now. Let's be real. <laughs> He should be in France cooking with Messi and Mbappe. I don't know. With, with Ziyech, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, and Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz up top. Look, Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz has had worse games. But still, not no way good enough, man. No way good enough. The, the man should not be playing as a striker. And that's just the truth. At this point, I'm just like, no. I'm starting to think we spent 70 million. And yes, we got a Champions League final goal. But apart from that, we we maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it wasn't worth it. I don't know. Anyway, we had substitutions. Um, we had Midrick come off for Madweke, and Madweke looked bright. He did look bright, and fair play to him, especially after he went onto that right-hand side, and he started to look quite comfortable there. Um, very, very direct. 
gets the ball, looks forward. None of this backwards madness. Looks forward. He's able to take on plays. He's got good speed. He's got good athleticism. Um, he links up quite well. Matt Doeke overall, very, very nice performance. We had Espelicueta come on for Reese James alongside Ziesch with uh, coming off for Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling as well. Some of his decisions, some of his passes, uh, painful, 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 which is what I, sc I was scared of when we signed him. I was like, look, I hope that he, he elevates himself and we don't bring him down to our level. I was scared of some of the errors that I'd seen him commit in a City and England shirt where you just see him take too long on the ball, he loses it easy or he takes the wrong shot, makes the wrong pass. Although sometimes there are games where he looks astronomical. It's too and far in between. Um, so there's that. Fofana came on for 15 minutes for Mason Mount and I have to say Fofana in that 15 minute gap looked really good. Really good, especially when he went round the keeper. He sent that defender back to Fulham, which is down the road. <laughs> well, technically Chelsea are in Fulham, but Craven Cottage. Um, and took the shot, good, good block um, by, by the goalkeeper. Uh, very, very unlucky from Fofana. Done what he could for 15 minutes. It was a bright performance from him up top, so fair play. And it's nice to see he's got DD on his on his uh, on his shirt. For, I know it's David Datro, but still he's got DD and Didier Drogba and that. <laughs> <laughs> but Ben Chilwell came on later on for Kukurea. So that's basically it. However, I have to round it all up and I have to point to the gaffer because Graham Potter. Graham Potter, it's pretty clear for this season, he's not going anywhere, right? But that doesn't mean he's not going to get any sort of criticism whatsoever. I'm sorry. Despite the signings we had today, I still don't know what we're trying to do. I still don't know. And some of the new players that we brought in, as I've said, you look at Enzo, he looked like he was in jail. Mudrik, completely absent and not allowed to do his thing. Players on the pitch that just should not be there. And I hope that we get to see changes because tactically, against a Fulham team at home that we should, come on, we should. We should not go 75 minutes without a shot on target against Fulham at home. We just shouldn't. And I understand that under Marco Silva, Fulham have had some sort of time in order to gel and in order to, to build those combinations and whatnot. But they just look like m a much more tactically efficient side than us. They just look... And some people are going to say, oh, but, you know, that's going to take time with us. I'm sorry, but the quality we have in this team and some of the players we brought in, as I've said, we expect the levels to go up just that bit at least. Tactically, it just looks a mess. It looks a mess. When you see Enzo, for example, by himself and there's no one coming back, there's no one there to close the lines or there's no one there to close the, the, the distances in order for him to get involved or for anyone else to provide him with support. When you see the way that we play, we try to advance and we're still constantly going sideways and backwards. We're playing players that like to panic and we're not using the players that we have or the new ones that, we've br that have been brought in that can actually cause some sort of difference. The whole way in the system right now, just just like it's like it's like you've just put eleven men together and you're just hoping they're just gonna blend. And there's still no there's still no I, I can't identify what we're doing. I can't. Some people are gonna say, give it a few games, give it a few games. I'm just putting you on notice. I'm putting you on notice. My concern is that this style of football I, wait, is it a style? I don't know what we're doing. Whatever we're trying to do isn't going to change. And my worry is you will get moments where individualities will shine. You'll get moments where Enzo will pick out one mad pass. Or you'll get you'll still get moments from even the players that I'm criticizing. Havertz will score a goal. You know, or Mount will take a, a shot from distance for once and it'll go top corner. Individual moments you'll find. But I'm talking about the way that we play, the way that we're set up, is all over the place. It's all over the place. And I don't get it. So for that, I have to say you're on notice. You're on notice. Let's see if it gets better. Let's wait and see. As I've said, because it's unrealistic to say anything about Graham Potter now, he's not going anywhere. So, all right, we'll ride until the end of the season. But keep your eyes on the ball and let's see if we actually begin to see some sort of system. My concern is that even with all of these new signings, probably for Graham Potter, it might even get worse. He might even find it harder to manage this team because you've brought even bigger personalities for big fees into this team now and you've got to manage them. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Because 0-0 tonight is not a good result. 
for the table, it's not a good result. We can look at the table and it's pretty clear now. Aston Villa can go over us. Aston Villa got a win and if they beat Leicester, Leicester right now who are in 14th, then we go into 10th. But Liverpool have got to play two games in hand over us and they're only one point behind us. So we could go into 11th. I'll end it there. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below um, and I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new video where I'll see what I discuss and what we go in depth about. But yeah, thank you very much. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Much appreciated. Um, hit the subscribe button if you want new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded and I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget Twitter and Instagram, social media in the description. Click that now and enjoy. See you tomorrow, people. In a bit, take care and peace.